So, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, sorry for my French. I just landed in USA from Paris. And uh, we are really enjoy Cordova at uh, Microsoft. That's why we are a bunch of guys to present today. And um, Kirk and I work for Microsoft Open Technology, a server of Microsoft working only with open source guy. And we try to build bridges between open source and Microsoft. And I really believe, and we really believe that the future of Microsoft is around open source. So that's why we are here. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, MS Open Tech, it's about a lot of projects, some of DevOps, some of graphical, HTML5, of course, some of H um, standards, and of course, today it's about Cordova. We produce a lot of code, we contribute a lot of open source projects, we use GitHub every day. That's the main mission of MS Open Tech. Uh, Cordova at MS Open Tech, uh, we contribute for Few few years now uh, to Cordova, and some dev like Kirk uh, created the last build. Uh, you see here the last version compatible with the 4.0 version. Just install it and try it. We, in fact, we updated the keyword windows for this version, and we support now and we create universal apt project structure, so that means when we create a, a new project with Cordova, we create at the same time one project for Windows Phone 8.1, one project for Windows 8.1, and for compatibility reason, we create also a, a project for Windows Phone 8.0. Uh, we are in the Windows Phone 8.1 native JavaScript HTML support and development, no more uh, web view, very native, and uh, that changed a little bit so, some security uh, aspects. So we created a shim that you can see uh, an URL uh, to have full compatibility with the actual work. And the Windows Phone 8.0, we continue to, to work on web view control. So the better it's to have a demo, if you're ready, Kirk. So... I'm not very close to a the microphone, mic? and my laptop's being touchy today, so I'll try and stretch. <laughs> um, so it's just the same CLI that everyone's already familiar with. You can create a project, and you can go into that project, and add a platform. What did I get wrong? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's better. That does work better. <laughs> and now you can uh, see that we created a solution. No. Not use. So this solution has um, the universal projects, has three different projects in it for the three different platforms. Uh, when you use Cordova uh, CLI to actually ask it to run, then it will build using the solution. And unfortunately, <laughs> my phone was not connected to my VM, yes. so it yes. should be now. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully when I do this again, it will actually install and run. Installing, done, yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's the demo. Uh, okay. Yes. Switch, switch back on the... We have over some cool stuff because we love Cordova and we try several things. So let me play a little bit with some projects. Uh, first of that, um, me, I open the solution with Visual Studio. And uh, here I have um, uh, an application build. Do you know um, Coco Studies? Coco Studies is really cool. Um, at Microsoft OpenTech, we work a lot on Coco Studio to running well on Windows devices. And in this case, it's not the C engine I will use, it's a HTML version. And of course, it's running as well. In, uh, in Cordova, so if I start my application, oh, one, two, three, four, some time, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's pretty slow today. Demo good, demo good. Ah. Okay, stop it and start again. Yeah, better. So, it's just working. There we go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, you get it. <laughs> the other, other project I want to, to, to share with you, it's uh, with Windows Phone 8.1, we support now WebGL. So of course, I try to play with WebGL. And, uh, a good way to play with WebGL is to use Babylon.js. I don't know if some guy know Babylon.js. It's a moonlight project from a Microsoft guy from France. I heard some <laughs> years ago. So uh, if I try that, I will try out this guy directly on my phone. Uh, don't deploy it. It's already done. Okay. Oops. Come on, guy. Huh. Huh. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Start again. Yes. Okay. There we go. P. It's. Yes. I will rotate that because it starts in portrait and um, page. Yes. Yes, we are. So, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> we really enjoy that. <laughs> Babylon GS and Cordova is, that, is exactly what you need. <laughs> and last but not least, your, your turn. We created a, a small plugin for Cortana. You know Cortana? It's a voice assistant for Windows Phone. So, your turn. So you might recognize the schedule for today. It's a little quick app that we wrote. And uh, in order to play with uh, Cortana, which should be interesting, try that. Phone gap day, what is happening at 2 PM? Starting the application. Yes, working. <laughs> okay, switch back to the slide. Of course, we are going to publish the plugin and the, um, and the demo application pretty soon. Oops. Yes. Next, it's Ryan about a tool for Apache Cordova from Visual Studio. It's pretty cool too. Excellent, cool. So I'm here to talk with you guys about uh, Visual Studio tools for Apache Cordova. Who here knew that Visual Studio supported Apache Cordova tooling? Anyone? Yeah? Sweet. I'd love to hear all those, see all those hands. Okay, so for those of you that don't know about it, I want to give like a really brief, brief primer on it, and then we'll actually kind of dig into it and see what it's like to use the tools. Uh, so first and foremost, it's an extension that's built on top of Visual Studio. Today, it's really in, I don't know, alpha release, beta release, whatever you want to call it. We call them CTPs. Uh, and we've released about four times since June, so super fast, super iterative. Uh, it is not yet in the box, but we do see a world in which this kind of 
the, the tools for Apache Cordova come kind of with, in the box with every sort of installation of Visual Studio. And we see a world in which it's, um, shall we say, affordable for the open source community in the very near future as well. So um, that's all stuff super to be excited about. Um, unlike PhoneGap and PhoneGap Build that uh, many of you I'm sure know and love, uh, it's optimized for local build. So what that really means is that it's less about sending your package out to the server to be compiled. It does require use of all the native build systems to be installed locally. Uh, and so kind of that's why I'm here on a Mac today, right? Uh, essentially running in parallels with my Mac. And in fact, uh, most of what we're going to be dealing with is Android and iOS. Uh, because it requires all parts of the tool chain to be installed, like, you know, the nodes and the gits and the everything, Android SDK and all that good kind of stuff, uh, that, that, that shit's hard, right? Like, there's a lot of different parts to that, and there's a lot of different versions and a lot of different particular kinds of configurations. And so it's really important to us to make that easy for developers to get started. So actually, when you kind of do a first installation of the tools for Apache Cordova on Visual Studio, you can see here that we're, like, we're going out there and we're grabbing all of it for you. We've got uh, Android SDK, Apache Ant, Git. We're installing Google Chrome for you. Now, of course, do you have to install all of that? No, you don't have to install that. You can uncheck any of them. But if you're a developer kind of getting a machine set up for the first time, it's super helpful and kind of gets you up and running in about the space of an hour. Um, you know, your mileage may vary depending upon connection speeds. Um, it is an IDE, it is an integrated development environment, and so kind of that means that you've got everything that you need kind of in that one place. And one of the big pieces of that, one of the things that we hear from a lot of folks that they really love about this, is that it's an IDE that includes debugging for all deployment targets, right? So if you want to debug against your Windows 8.1 device, awesome, cool, you can do that from Visual Studio, that's expected. But what if you want to debug against Android? Hell yeah, you can do that too. You can do it against an emulator, a tethered device. And uh, you'll see here, I've got like a little asterisk. Let's make that asterisk a little bit bigger. Uh, iOS debugging, not yet, but very, very soon. So if any of you guys actually download the tools today, uh, you won't be able to debug against iOS, but you know, give it a couple weeks, and like, we're not, we're not talking very long, a couple weeks, and you'll be set to go. All right, cool. Um, so. From platform targets, uh, today, the Visual Studio tools for Apache Cordova uh, support Android, iOS, Windows Store, meaning like, you know, a tablet type of device, and Windows Phone. Um, we have not yet added uh, support for BlackBerry. That is something that's on our list. Um, and if it's something that you guys care deeply about, we hope that you'll send feedback to us and let us know that, hey, this is something I, I really want and my customers need. Um, let's see here. I think that's pretty good. Everyone feel good about that? Yeah? Excellent. All right. Cool. All right. So we're going to take a three-minute tour of Visual Studio and kind of, you know, give you guys. We, I was going to, I thought I had a lot more time on stage, but it got cut down. So we're just going to do three minutes. All right. Just my stage mic. I feel like I'm Elton John at the piano or something here. I got my mic and all that. Uh, so I've got um, kind of just a, a simple, simple little app here, and in fact, um, I'm hoping that this will become the social media craze of at least this conference. Um, it's an app called um, Godzilla Family, Fun Family Photo Album. Um, so let's actually, let's do this, and in fact, for this one, let's make sure I've got MobaZen uh, attached here. Anyone, everyone familiar with MobaZen? No? Uh, it's a cool little app. You guys should try it out. Basically, it installs on your Android device. I've got a little Nexus uh, 7 that I'm using right here. And it's just screencasting from my Nexus 7 back over to, um, to my desktop so that you guys can share in the fun. All right. So we're going to go to, uh, we got an Android platform. We're going to do this in debug mode because, hey, it's fun to, to debug. Uh, and we're not going to do it to Ripple. We could deploy to Ripple if we wanted to. But we're going to deploy to the device itself. Go back here, deploying out. Give that build a second to do its thing. Um, while it's kind of building up, uh, kind of one of the things that I want to point out here is that, uh, oh, wow, here it comes up now. That was faster than I thought. Excellent. Okay, so this is the uh, Godzilla family uh, photo album. Uh, the basic idea is that you take pictures of your friends pretending to be Godzilla. So here's the deal. I'm going to kind of bring this guy up. We're going to take a picture. 
And I want everyone in the audience to give me your best Godzilla impression. Rawr, rawr. Yeah, all right, sweet. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we've just taken a fun album photo here for this. We're gonna hit check there. Cool, now it's in our, uh, in our app there and we can just kind of keep on collecting uh, sort of Godzilla selfies for the rest of the conference. Um, but like, you know, let's say that things weren't quite working right. We want to, you know, do something a little bit different here. Let's actually set a breakpoint and do that from within Visual Studio. So you'll already see that over here, I've got uh, the ability to kind of inspect it with all the same kind of dev tools that you'd expect in like the Chrome dev tools or something like that. But it's always fun to set breakpoints. So we're gonna come over here. Let's find a good spot. And actually we'll do it on the, um, we'll do it on the Git library photo since we already took a, um, took a photo. And let's go back over here. We've set our breakpoint now. Bring back Godzilla. Hit photo library. Oh, and we just hit our uh, breakpoint there. Excellent. So now we can come over here and we get nice inspection for all the different methods, everything that's available on that particular object. And that is super, super helpful. <laughs> right? So this same kind of debugging experience available across all the platforms, all the different targets. So whether you go into Ripple, Emulator, or Tether device, whether you're going to Android, Windows, soon to be iOS, uh, and like that hopefully removes a lot of the mystery behind actually what's happening in your app. Um, so super, super cool stuff. All right, and then, uh, you know what? I think actually we did that in there. Let's do one last thing. Let's actually show what it's like getting it over to iOS. And then um, you can imagine that we're attaching the debugger, you know, but just wait a couple weeks, right? Okay. So we're gonna head on over here to the Mac side of the house and I've just got a terminal window opened up. I'm gonna start up a little uh, kind of a node module here called VSMDA remote. Okay, so all this is really doing is this is a remote build agent that we've installed via node on the Mac side of the house. It's really just kind of, it's listening. It's just sitting there saying, hey, I'm ready to build using Xcode whenever Visual Studio tells me to do that. So I'm gonna head back over to Visual Studio. Um, I've already done the work to tell Visual Studio where my Mac is, it so happens. In fact, I'll show you guys here. Tools, options, multi-device hybrid apps, which is kind of the old name of the extension. And I've said, hey, you should go listen to Godzilla.local. Uh, Godzilla is the name of my machine. Um, so say okay, and here, let's go ahead and stop debugging on that old uh, Android device. And we're actually gonna go over to iOS. Uh, I don't know, you guys like an iPhone Retina 4 inch? That sounds good to me. We'll do it on the simulator. Okay, so at this point, Visual Studio is queuing up the build and it's going out to Godzilla.local and that little VSMDA remote listener and in fact, we're gonna come back over here. Look at that, it's actually kind of started listening. It's bringing it up. And in just a second here, we'll actually have the simulator come up and we'll actually have a running instance of the app kind of working on the, um, oh, here it is, yeah, yeah, totally. On the Apple side of the house. Now, this could be done with, ooh, wow, it's big. Window, where's the zoom on this guy? Uh, zoom, there we are, scale. Egads, how do you drive this crazy thing? Right, but there we go. We can just kind of keep on going from there and you can imagine a world in the not so distant future where you can debug against that and um, kind of have perfect visibility into what's happening with your apps and all the platforms you care about. Cool. All right, well, I told you it'd be a three minute tour. I think I kept that reasonably to three minutes. If you have uh, additional questions, please, I'd love to kind of talk to you and uh, don't forget to say hi to my mom, at Ryan J. Salva. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are interested, if you cannot wait to try this out, if you cannot wait another moment, you are in luck. Uh, so we've got about uh, 70 different virtual machines that we've created. Um, as it so happens, those are left over from Cascadia JS where I showed up last month or maybe a little bit longer ago. Uh, all those uh, machines are available right there. There's a username and password. They're only good for about the next week or so. Um, so there is an expiration date on that guy. But if you do want to uh, get a hold of one, just search for 
Visual Studio Cordova v Virtual Machine or VM and uh, you'll find a blog post that I wrote uh, a couple weeks ago that gives you kind of instructions on how to get it. Um, the product team was also listening at VS Cordova Tools on Twitter and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your conference. Come talk to me. Um, so happy to be a part of this and this great community. Thanks. All right, this is like the clown car of presentation, so sorry about that, we'll be quick. Uh, so has anyone heard of WinJS before? Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, okay, slightly different question. Who here likes writing something once and being able to use it in a bunch of places? You're at PhoneGap, come on, come on, right? All right, so WinJS is essentially a UI library that we created to have an awesome set of app experiences across all of the Microsoft devices, from a phone up to a giant Kinect television. Um, and supports all inputs like keyboard, mouse, and touch. But then what's really important and relevant to you guys is that recently we released 3.0, which brought us cross-platform. So now we're not just Microsoft devices, we're all major browsers, we're all the devices you care about. And so now you can build with our controls in your app and they will just work everywhere on all sizes. Um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, so to do this, we've actually you know, made a Cordova app and so this is a, not a very sexy app, it's no Godzilla, but it's a, a simple app that we were able, the code is on GitHub, I can point you to it, and we were able to deploy it to a website, to the Google Play Store, it's in the iOS Store, and we didn't have to change any of the code for any of it, so all of the controls and UI and Ripple is really fast, as you can see, um, <laughs> without having to change any of it, right? Because there's, uh, you know, usually once I get to this part in the pitch, people are like, well, Jeff, you know, there's, there's this sexy Ionic thing now that you're about to hear about. There's other ULI libraries as well. Why is, why is WinJS special? Why should I check you out? Uh, and really the, the thing that we've come across after all these years of trying to build apps for Windows, so there's a lot of the inbox apps like Xbox Music, is that there's a lot of subtlety when you're trying to build your apps for all these platforms and all these markets. So yeah, you can build a toggle switch, that's just some divs. But is it RTL? Is it, you know, do you support accessibility? You know, how do you do different globalization things? And that's the simplest control. What if you want to have like a, a list view? We have a collection of stuff. Well, okay, you throw some divs on the screen. What if you have, you know, 20,000 songs in your library? Are you going to throw 20,000 divs on the screen? No, the iPad's going to kill you. So you're going to virtualize. Okay, now you're virtualizing. How is your scroll bar management? Are you going to do the Facebook thing where you load one page at a time? Well, that's not going to work for a song library because I want to be able to drag that to the end and see my Z songs. You know, got to get to ZZ Top really fast. Um, and then what if you want to do grouping, and what if you rotate it horizontally, and you want to be able to have it adapt and do grid layouts with hero tiles? What if you want to have an asynchronous data source that's updating in the background, and things are animating in as the user is scrolling, and you want to keep that performance going? You don't want to figure all that stuff out. You got apps to build, you got money to make. And so if nothing else, I think you should check out our, uh, our controls on try.buildwinjs.com because we have done all that hard work for you and you have a set of battle-tested controls that are freely available with Apache 2. We're on GitHub, you can come yell at us, file issues, tell us what controls you want. We're really excited to get feedback from developers. You can also tweet at us. Um, you know, we don't have our moms watching, so you know, you can say whatever you want. Um, but yeah, we're just really excited and there's also a blog post that we just sent out about how we work with Cordova and we have another uh, shim that Eric mentioned earlier for dealing with security issues in Windows 8. So I'm Jeff Fisher, this is Rachel, we'll be upstairs at the Microsoft booth. If you have any questions you want to talk about your app or how you can make it great with WinJS, just let us know. Thanks. Just a quick uh, wrap up about that. So Cordova platform at Windows, it's something we really love. So test it, give us feedback, what is missing, what we need to do on the next time. Does Ryan is here? Ryan? No, because you know, as a team at Microsoft, we need a marketing guy. Where is the marketing guy? He's not here anymore, so, mm. okay. So the guy have to present you a prize um, a, a concourse here, so show, up your show us your application, sorry, and you can win some cool stuff like a Surface Pro 3, some, some um, Nokia things, some phones. So it's only on the website, do, 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 where it is, where it is. Mm, oh, perhaps. Yes, so are you ready? I'm ready to push on the button and to win a this kind of things, of course, if it's running on Windows. Okay, that finished was pitch.
See you next time. Bye.